And now word out of London, confirmation that multiple Grammy award-winning singer-songwriter Amy Winehouse is dead. Police in London today responded to a call about a woman found deceased at the singer's apartment. Winehouse was declared dead at the scene. Alan Duke is on the phone with us now. He's a CNN entertainment producer. So, Alan, um, the official word coming from a police, confirmation that, yes, she is dead, but we still don't know how she died, right? Exactly. They're calling it at this early stage unexplained. What happened about 4 o'clock London time uh, today, an ambulance was called to her house after someone found a, a woman's body. They called the police. The police came there and confirmed it was a dead woman. Now, police haven't officially released her name, but we've got confirmation from her publicist that she's dead. Uh, and uh, they're saying that it was at her apartment in London. Unexplained causes so far early in their investigation. You know, it was just less than two months ago that she was in rehab preparing for a European tour, which she canceled about a month ago after a, a, a disastrous performance in Serbia. You know, and so, Alan, you know, the uh, spokesperson released this statement, um, Chris Goodman, saying everyone who is involved with Amy is shocked and devastated. Our thoughts are with her family and friends. The family will issue a statement when ready. They are shocked and devastated, yet publicly, and we still don't know the exact cause of death, but publicly we have known uh, about her drug and alcohol problems. You mentioned the rehab just a, a couple of months ago. Uh, talk to me how people around her, how concerned they were about her addiction, uh, about her experience, about her trying to handle that and her performance. Well, you know, in 2009, her parents went public with their efforts to try to help save her daughter, predicting that she was on the road to destruction if she didn't get any help, if she didn't take the road to recovery. She went into rehab several times. She had, a, of course, a much publicized arrest and a, and a broken marriage. Uh, and, and, and again, preparing for her European tour, they put her, uh, she voluntarily went into rehab. We don't know much about that rehab. It was, at a, it was a British rehabilitation program. She got out in early June and immediately began uh, her tour in Europe, which was supposed to be for 12 cities, but only lasted through Belgrade, uh, uh, Serbia, where she was booed off the stage, obviously slurring and forgetting lyrics and just stumbling around. Very, very disastrous performance, and it was the last one that we'll ever see from Amy Winehouse. Mm, Alan Du, thanks so much. CNN's entertainment writer, appreciate that. HLN's Dr. Drew Pinsky is an expert on celebrities and substance abuse and all the problems that go along with it. He's on the phone with us now from Los Angeles. So, Dr. Drew, again, we don't know the exact cause of death, but immediately people start thinking about her drug and alcohol addiction and all that she's been through. And Alan underscoring there, she was in rehab just a couple of months ago. But this death and her journey underscores what message to you about the difficulties that come with having some kind of substance abuse problem? Well, it's very simple, that addiction is fatal. Uh, I don't care what the specific cause of death was, she has a fatal condition, and if it was secondary or primary, it's all really the natural history of opiate addiction. And as Alan told that story, when an opiate addict goes into treatment, Opiate addiction takes months to years to treat, and one of the most serious uh, risks, in my experience, to that recovery for celebrities and particularly musicians is they return to their career, they return to the road far too prematurely, and it's absolutely predictable what will happen. The fact is, you know, f a funny thing, people look at these, these stories and go, oh, addiction treatment doesn't work. The crazy thing about addiction is part of the disease is a disturbance of thinking where the addict themselves convinces themselves they don't need to listen to or do what they're being told to do. And if they simply do the recovery process on a daily basis, just simply do it, they will be fine just the way an, a, a diabetic is fine if they take their insulin three times a day. But just as with the diabetic, if they don't take their insulin, the addict doesn't do their recovery program, they inevitably, in all cases, will relapse. And when it's opiate addiction, it's a progression to fatality. The, pro the prognosis for an opiate addict is worse than the vast majority of cancers. So, Dr. G, you say this is a real disturbance of thinking for the addict, but what about for the people around that addict? She was surrounded by a whole lot of people because of her industry, because of her fame. How much do they play a role in 
getting that help or helping to enable that problem? Well, it's a huge problem. And, and the fact is that these celebrities make a lot of money for a lot of people. And so those folks are very invested in getting them back out into their career as quickly as possible. And they really, just like the general public, don't understand that this something isn't, quote, fixed after treatment in 30 days or 60 days or even 90 days. Just like Ro Robert Downey is sort of the model for what should happen. You have to go away for a couple of years or you will die. He got that message. He did it. And he returned. And now he has a flourishing life and career. That's the way it has to go. And there are unfortunately no shortcuts with opiate addiction. Dr. Drew Pinsky, thanks so much for your time.